10 easy style tips to create the perfect tonal outfits, whatever your budget. Hello everyone, today I'm going to talk you through my 10 easy style tips to create the perfect tonal outfits, not just for spring, but the tips will work whatever season, whatever budget, and even if you have different pieces in your wardrobe. So if like me, you like to look polished and very put together, then you've come to the right place. A portion of today's video has very kindly been supported by Lily Silk. I've chosen four beautiful pieces for spring that I think you'll love too, so I shall be sharing those a little bit later. But first, let's talk about the importance of texture. Now, probably the easiest style tip I could recommend for creating tonal or really nice monochromatic outfits would be to really consider texture. Now, obviously you don't have lots of different colors to be able to play with, but that in no way means that you can't make your outfits appear more interesting and in turn really put together as a result. So the first way I would advise you do that would be with the feel of the pieces you add into the mix. And in my humble opinion, the more texture, the better when it comes to creating tonal outfits. Texture can provide more visual interest to the overall effect. Imagine your look is just broken down into just the fabrics themselves. So for example, you might lay cotton jersey with a bit more cotton jersey. And it's okay, it looks put together, but nothing is exactly jumping out at me. But when I lay, say, silk against cotton, both items pop so much more visually and provide more depth to the look overall. You could then go a step further and add wool into the mix, and we've elevated the interest even further. And and then finish with a leather handbag perhaps for yet another different feel into that outfit combination. And voila, we now have a really luxurious mixture of different fabrics and all those lovely different textures, but the overall combination feels really polished and put together as a result. Now, one quick bonus style tip on this would be to bear in mind where you want to draw the eye to, and then add the most textured item there. And of course, on the flip side of that, vice versa, for example, if I want to draw attention, say, away from my hips, I think about going going for the textured item on my top half, a little bit like I am today actually, and then keeping the bottom portion of me smooth. That will just keep drawing the eye upwards towards that texture. Tones. Okay, so let's talk tones now, and there are two main ways I think you could look at this. A tonal outfit made up of exactly the same shade, or one with a variation all along a similar kind of color palette. So let me show you what I mean. So I would suggest making some room on your bed, or perhaps even having a section of your rail really clear, to be able to make a dedicated selection that are exactly the same shade or as near to it, and then a section of your rail that are kind of along a similar train of thought, but different tones. I bet you will be really surprised to see how many pieces you actually have along a similar train of thought once you get going and have a good rummage through. And actually going through this process can mean that some of those lesser worn pieces you might have in your wardrobe do end up getting a bit of a moment in the spotlight. Now navy is probably the easiest for me personally to go with in exactly the same tone as, as you can see in this footage here. I've got quite a lot of navy. Now there's no right or wrong with this whatsoever. So whichever tones you seem to have an awful lot of in your own wardrobe is perfect for this exercise so to speak. It's about creating your personal perfect tonal outfits, so it has to be personal to you. But the process of just having them separated on a rail like this, or even if you fancy going a little bit OCD and you could color coordinate your wardrobe like Abby very kindly did to mine, it's just about the process and inevitably as a result, putting those outfit ideas together being so much easier. Now, if you're new here, thank you so much for stopping by. It would be very much appreciated if you'd like to subscribe to my channel for more styling videos like this. A mixture of tones. So let's say it's day two and I'm wanting a little bit of a softer edge to my look. So I might start with a piece that I'm wanting to base my outfit around. This is often how I'll get dressed actually, especially if it's something new in my wardrobe and I really want to wear it, that's the point that I'll start with. But I'm also, of course, thinking about the texture that I want to add into the mix and I'm remembering about different layers that I want to add. Plus I'm bearing in mind where I want to draw the eye to. So I might add a belt to make sure that my waistband is quite a focal point. Follow that checklist list in your head if you like, or even have it written down to begin with if that's a little bit easier to remember. And eventually you will find that you're going through this process without even really thinking about it. It is totally personal preference really whether you decide to go for one tone or a collection within the same color palette. And in all honesty, I do a little bit of each in any given week depending on my mood or the occasion. Plus along the way it is giving some old clothes a new lease of life and it will also make it a lot easier to see where the gaps are in your wardrobe too. So win-win all round. 
So like I mentioned, I feel very lucky to be working with Lily Silk again for spring. And I've chosen four beautiful pieces, which will look equally stunning as the star of the show, or indeed within tonal outfits too. So first up, I zoned straight in on this absolutely beautiful silk bow blouse in a light and very fresh feeling pastel blue. Pastel blue is of course one of the big fashion trends this season. And regardless of trends, I just personally really love wearing the shade. Now, although it's made from a grade A mulberry silk, it's actually made slightly differently to the typical shiny versions we often see. And the technique, is called ghost crepe which is giving it this slightly chiffon effect which I personally think makes it really stand out above the rest. Now you might remember last summer I chose a very beautiful mulberry silk twill striped shirt in blue and white. Well I wore that one so much last year that I was very excited to see the same style had just launched in the very on-trend colour red and this for me would be the perfect way to tick that trend box. I'm getting the quality and the feel of fabrics that I love. The style is still very classic and true to how I dress anyway, but having that little hint of this season's colour brings the look right up to date. Now I've been sharing Lily Silk pieces almost since I started on YouTube actually, and the brand has really gone from strength to strength over the years. One lovely addition this season would have to be this pair of trousers. Now these have been made from the finest premium merino, and yet they do feel particularly light, almost cotton-like I guess. Now I've gone true to size as I have with everything at Lily Silk actually, their sizing is always very spot on, and I just love the tailoring of these. Beautifully made, stunning fabric, composition and in a colour that I didn't already have in my wardrobe. Happy days to that. And last but by no means least, I couldn't resist a little bit of cashmere. It would be rude not to at Lily Silk, I think. But for spring, I'm going with short sleeves with this classic crew neck that I chose in Camel. The design is simple yet elevated, understated and classic in style, but really luxurious in feel. And I absolutely love it. And actually, it's these sorts of looks that really sum up what effortless style really is for me. Focusing on getting the fit and the shape just right, and then just letting those beautiful yarns and fabrics do all the talking for you. And don't forget, if you do decide to shop, to enter my discount code at checkout. I've linked everything that I'm wearing in the description box below, so at the end of this video, please do click the link and view their stunning new in range for yourself. Soft and tough mix. And one more quick style tip on tones, but once you've mastered the head to toe in one colour and then a collection of different tones within the same colour palette, then you can start to really experiment with your looks and get a little bit more creative. Now the easiest way I can explain this is with a little styling mantra that I say to myself. Soft, soft, tough, or tough, tough, soft. It's totally bonkers, I know, but it actually works. And now that I've said it, I can't unsay it. So I've no doubt lumbered you with my own funny little styling quirk. But honestly, it is such a handy style tip to have in your back pocket. In fact, do let me know actually in the comment section below if you've ever tried this one before, or perhaps if you're up for giving it a go. I promise you it is one of those style tips that is just so very handy. So you could go really basic with black or white and the soft, soft touch approach will work brilliantly. Or when you get a little bit braver and you fancy going for something a little bit different or maybe something bright, you can really see how fun it can be to create those quite unexpected, but equally really stylish outfits. Tonal looks never need to feel boring and hopefully this little waffle and my funny styling quirk proves just that. Shapes. Now tonal looks are one of the easiest ways to make an outfit feel incredibly elegant and really put together. There's almost a confidence to looks like this that I personally really warm to. But it's important to consider shapes just as much with monochrome outfits as you would with any other look that you're creating. Choosing your shape strategically can make all the difference. When tonal hues are used really correctly, you can create a seamless column of colour. And it's that column of colour that not only makes you look effortlessly pulled together, but it can also give the impression of more height too, which is a lovely side bonus in my humble opinion. But it's very easy to get a little bit lazy when it comes to shapes and think, oh, anything goes as long as it's within a similar tone. When in actual fact, you're missing a trick to making your outfits look 10 times better. Think about layers and where your items are hitting. Where do you want to draw the eye to? Could you add volume to your shoulders perhaps? Would a crop jacket sit better against that long line of your high-waisted jeans? These are all the points I would be asking myself when I put a tonal look together. Almost like a little bit of a checklist again I'd have in my head. Have the colour and the pieces together of what it is you want to wear and ask yourself, okay, that's great, but have I added enough shape into the mix? And even if you only add one of those points that I mentioned before, 
you'll find that it really brings an outfit together so much better. And also it's worth asking yourself, what feeling are you trying to capture within that outfit idea? For example, I might want to look quite relaxed and effortless, so maybe I could opt for softer cuts and beautiful drapes on my layers. Or maybe on the flip side, you want to feel all boss vibes and like you mean business. That would involve some sharper shapes and perhaps some more tailored pieces and nips and tucks in all the right places. Shape within a look will always be enhanced by factors such as tailored waists or really padded shoulders. But remember, the shape should flow throughout the entirety of an outfit to make it look as polished as possible. So when you decide on a theme as such, it's really worth double checking that all of those shapes blend together well as a whole. Similar tonal accessories will finish these looks off perfectly too, especially shoes as it happens, as that helps to keep that clean, really minimal line of color flowing all the way down, literally to the tip of your toes. Color. Now, when people hear the word tonal, a lot of women automatically think about neutral color palettes. And while I am, as you know, a huge fan of neutrals, they are in no way, shape or form the only tonal look you can create. In fact, you could make a monochrome look with whatever color you have in your wardrobe. Neon pink, if you like the world is your oyster. But to make life easier, I would say just start out by opting for the colors you have the most of. If for example, your go-to tone as such is navy, start having a play with tonal navy looks and work your way up to that little portion of pink that you might have tucked away in the back of your wardrobe. Now, if you're an avid follower of the fashion trends, you could think about going head to toe in red perhaps. And actually as a side note to that, dopamine dressing is a real thing. So use it to your advantage. Not only looking and feeling really polished because of that column of color that you've got from head to toe, but giving yourself just that boost of confidence with that great pop of red at the same time. Or perhaps pale neutrals when you're feeling a little bit more dreamy and you just need that extra essence of calm. Remembering those other style tips that we mentioned before with shape and texture, and you'll discover that the effect is just the same whatever color you choose. It's not about the money. Now, I think it's really important to point out that tonal dressing does not have to mean expensive dressing. Tonal looks by their very nature do make your outfits look more expensive as a whole because they're so cohesive, but that doesn't mean they have to cost it. Now, I've never been a fan of snobbery in fashion, so any assumption that all your clothes need to have cost a small fortune or they're not good enough is just a ridiculous sentiment to me. And nor do I care about labels either. If your budget is shopping at say Florence and Fred in Tesco, who actually, can Incidentally, I've actually found some really great pieces with in the past, then so be it. I bet you could totally pull off a really nice tonal look from there too. But what I would advise is always looking for the nicest quality you can afford. So F&F make cotton items and lots of linen in summer, for example. So I'd probably head in that direction. And at H&M, I'd be looking for tensile, lyocell, and maybe Ecovero. You don't need masses of spare change to look and feel pulled together in your tonal outfits or any outfit for that matter. But being aware of what your clothes are made of and where you choose to spend your pennies will definitely make a difference. Accessories can be your new best friend. Now, when it comes to creating those perfect tonal outfit ideas, whatever the season, don't forget about the value your accessories will hold. A well-placed pop of color with perhaps your shoes, a handbag, belt, or even your jewelry can be the finishing touch that you've been looking for. Now, I don't have an awful lot of colors in my own wardrobe, so I'm kind of working with what I've got here to illustrate my point. But let's say I've gone for a palette of grays for a combination tonal outfit, and I fancy a little pop of something different. I could add in these extremely bright neon pink heels to add an unexpected, but I think stylish twist to the look. Pink and gray, of course, go great together, but it's actually the vibrancy of that tone that just really makes them stand out. Definitely a style tip that I reach for often and something that's so easy to do with a whole host of different accessories, probably a lot of which you've already got in your own wardrobe. Proportions. Now thinking about proportions within a look is always important, but in some ways I think it's even more important when it comes to wearing that one color from head to toe. Not only giving you the ability to divert attention away from certain areas, but also helping you just not get lost in a mass of fabric and losing all definition to your shape. It's all about knowing which areas you want to enhance and which ones you'd rather skirt over, so to speak. So I'm taking this all right back to basics now and just breaking down a look by splitting 
into two pieces, the top half and my bottom half. Now, if you're wanting to really elongate your legs, think about going for the super high-waisted fashion trend, or even just a basic high waist rather than something mid. As an added height booster, I would also opt for a pair with a beautiful and perfectly placed pleat that goes down the center, and that would just help keep that vertical line running all the way down. And for extra points, I would then add something pointed on my feet to just further keep that line all the way down to my toes. But then, thinking of the proportions I'm making with said pair of high-waisted trousers, as you can see, this particular pair is fairly wide on the hips, and there's a fair amount of puddling going on at my ankles as well. So I want to contrast that on my top half here, give myself a little bit more definition. So thinking of a different texture within the same tone, I would probably opt for this top. But proportion-wise, I think I would always tuck this in with this particular pair of trousers, so that you see that definition of my waistline. And then keeping that long lean line and making my waistband stand out even more, you could then opt for a crop jacket over anything too long, just further drawing the eye to that waistband. And then to keep the eye going upwards, you could tie your hair up out of the way or maybe switch out that top for a V-neck instead. Alternatively, you could opt for an oversized blazer for a longer line that just finishes perhaps on your thigh. That will add a little bit more volume. Or you could switch out the trousers for something a little bit slimmer and you could have the blazer as the focus being a little bit oversized on your top half instead. There are so many different variations you could play with when it comes to proportions and I could go on and on and on on this subject. Needless to say, it's definitely worth Worth considering, especially when you're wanting to create these tonal looks, as it can make so much difference to the overall feel of your outfits. Tailoring. Now suits, of course, are one of the easiest ways to create a perfect tonal look because, stating the obvious a bit here, but when you buy a suit, chances are that both the top and the bottoms are made from exactly the same fabric, so they're going to work together really effortlessly. And on top of that, I personally love buying suits because of their versatility. I literally reuse all of my blazers and suit trousers in so many different outfit ideas, far more actually than wearing them as a suit on their own. When styled together, these pieces can act as a bit of a base to a look with a simple act of swapping in different tops to create different styles and variations. For example, here is my tonal suit. You could make it look a bit more casual with a t-shirt underneath, more workwear with a blouse, more on trend with a pair of trainers, more evening with heels and a cami. You get the idea. And that's even before we've started mixing and matching that blazer with all the different items I have in my wardrobe as well. Having at least one beautiful, perfectly fitting suit in your own wardrobe will become invaluable for your outfit ideas, just generally speaking. But certainly when it comes to making those tonal looks, it can fast become a bit of a go-to for you when you just want something very quick and easy, but to look chic and polished in the end. I really hope you've all enjoyed today's video and found my 10 style tips to create your own beautiful tonal outfits really helpful. But which is your favorite outfit idea? Do let me know which you would wear in the comments below. Also, don't forget to take a look at all those beautiful pieces new in for spring at Lily Silk. The link, as always, is in the description box below. Have a wonderful week, ladies, and I shall see you on Sunday. Take care.